Hi guys, I want to welcome you to my second webisode. Um, my first webisode was pretty successful. Um, I think that you guys enjoyed it. Um, at least I hope you did. And I think it was pretty informative. Um, just as a little recap, I talked to you about airbrush makeup, um, the benefits of it, you know, all those interesting little facts that so many people um, like to be filled in on. Today, what I want to talk to you about um, are some of my little girly favorite things, and that is all about skincare. Um, so many of my clients come to me, and you know, it's it's not that they don't put the time in, and it's not that they don't care about their face. It's just that it's not a priority to them. You know, they, they'll use the regular Noxzema cleansers and they'll use, um, you know, like a regular oil of olay moisturizer, but they don't consider, you know, all the preventative measures that you can take uh, non-surgically that will really um, prolong the, the, the youthfulness of your skin. Um, I actually personally started anti-aging when I was 19 years old, I would say. I started using a full anti-aging skincare regime. Um, and basically what that means is that I just wanted to stop anything before it started, uh, which I think is really important. Um, my skincare regime right now is very uh, varied. <laughs> I actually, um, I like to exfoliate with uh, the apricot scrub from St. Ives. It's really, really good. The, um, the apricot scrub, it's like those, it's like almost like, you know, it, it's, it, it's getting all those dead skin cells off, but, um, the apricot, uh, is really nourishing and replenishing and moisturizing at the same time. And it comes in a regular formula and then a sensitive skin formula. And I do recommend it to everyone. Now, before I start recommending all these products to you, what I would like to tell you is this. Your skin, we're like snakes, okay? So our skin completely replenishes itself every 30 days, okay? It's, it's unlike a snake, we're not shimmying out of a little, you know, dead skin thing, but we are in fact uh, losing all of that skin um, in a 30 day period. Um, but it comes off in little flakes and you don't notice it when you're itching and you're scratching and you know, you're scrubbing and you're exfoliating. But your skin does have a memory to it. And what that means is that your skin remembers the positions of scars, birthmarks, coloration, uh, discoloration. So what happens is, is that gives us an opportunity um, as consumers to maybe change something. So if your skin's completely replacing itself every 30 days and it's going all the way down into the dermis and it's recognizing that, you know, oh, hey, moles there, scars there, this is here, that's there, we can come in and kind of, you know, do a little memento with our skin and give our skin a form of amnesia, so to speak. Um, when you exfoliate your skin, you're removing that top coat of skin. And the more you exfoliate, the more you allow your skin to forget the position of where scars and, and, and pigmentation marks were. Um, that being said, if you exfoliate more frequently, your skin is going to slowly start to look fresher and fresher and fresher. And any deep set park mock, park mocks <laughs> will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll slowly go away. Pock marks, you know, those are always a thing that people ask me questions about. Now pop pock marks, you know, you have your little divots in your skin and nobody ever thinks about what they can do with it. And of course you could spackle it with silicone and a little spackle knife, but you know, who's going to sit there and do that every morning before they're, before they go to work. So I always tell people, and this is something that people don't realize is that, uh, those pock marks can be filled in with Restylin. Uh, Restylin is a filler. It's made of the same cellular composition as the rest of the body. And, um, you cannot have an allergic reaction to it. So it dissipates. Um, if, for some reason, uh, you shot it into an area and it didn't look too good. You can actually uh, shoot a sugar molecule on top of it, which will immediately um, make the Restylin go away. So there's absolutely no way that you can have allerg an allergic reaction to it. Um, you can just, you know, puff out some of those deep set pock marks. Another question that I get all the time is dark circles underneath the eyes. Um, so many people come up to me and they say, Alexa, what skin cream can I use that will, um, you know, help me with the dark circles under the eyes? 
Hylexin, I've seen amazing results with for people who, you know, had really dark areas under their eyes, but that's also a long-term treatment. So, you know, for somebody who's coming to me for a trial that I happen to be available for their day and, you know, it's two weeks before, screw the Hylexin. I mean, th there's nothing I can do. But I can tell you this. Um, dark circles, um, one second. Okay, so what I'm going to show you right now is the color wheel. Um, the color wheel is pretty interesting. Um, and what we, what we need to think about when we're counteracting something is what is opposite on that color wheel. So underneath the eyes, people say you're dark. Now, that's not darkness. Uh, that's not a gray or a black. Dark is comprised of different colors. Um, so you have to think of what you're counteracting, basically. Um, as far as, you know, a treatment that you can do, what dark circles are is actually dried blood underneath the surface of the skin, and it's something that can actually be very easily uh, vacuumed out. It's like a pretty non-invasive, um, quick little treatment that you can do at your, like, local uh, facial plastic surgeon. But uh, not a lot of people want to have things sucked out from underneath their eyes. So you do have the option of color correction. Um, and it's very similar to the way that you would cover a tattoo, but it's not, you know, you're not using something that's so full coverage. So basically you have this color wheel and on your color wheel, you have blues and purples. Blues and purples is what uh, is underneath a dark circle. So when you look at the color wheel, which is direct, which, which you have to look at the polar opposite of the blue and the purple and what's completely opposite of blue and purple are things in the orange family. Now as a makeup artist, there are things that I personally use on a person's wedding day that, you know, are, are going to be steadfast and reliable, but you know, the, the general public doesn't have access to products like that, nor will they drive into Manhattan for one particular color stick. So I will tell you this, if you have darkness and you have, you know, these blues and purples underneath your eyes, you have to counteract it which, which, with whatever color is opposite on the color wheel. Um, and in this case, that would be orange. So a nice little trick is you could take um, some of a coral lipstick or um, a, a pure orange lipstick and just simply muddle it between your fingers so that you heat it up and you give it a little bit more slip factor and you can press it underneath your eyes and then you take a warm base concealer um, for me, I'm like an NW20, um, which basically means you want a pink base concealer and you pat it on top because you want the bottom layer to maintain its integrity. Because sometimes what happens is, is um, ladies tend to like to rub and what happens is, is you're distorting what you've originally put down. And I, uh, I don't think that a lot of you have airbrush compressors at home. So that's why you would take the step of taking the orange, the orange lipstick, putting it right there and then taking like an NW20, I keep saying that you don't know what that means, it's a MAC concealer which means neutral warm, two part pink, one part uh, yellow, and you would press it on top and voila, the dark circles are gone. Um, another great product that I love for counteracting dark circles and popping out uh, these tear ducting areas is Eye Bright by Benefit. It's a beautiful product um, and it is a pink base and that also warms up the eyes. Now there are some makeup lines and some makeup artists who have a completely different philosophy about things like this. Um, for example, Bobbi Brown pretty much only uses yellow based concealers and has a concealing uh, system in terms of, you know, putting a yellow base concealer and then setting it with a powder. My only problem artistically uh, from that perspective is, is if you have a person who is a yellow base, I find that most people are yellow base unless they're very, very Irish um, or uh, have a or have a very pink undertone to them. I find that most people have yellow base skin, but I always want to warm up underneath the eyes. You always want to have that warmth underneath the eyes. So that is why I, uh, that's, that's the step that I would take. So those, those are the two little tricks I told you about the pockmark. And then we covered, um, you know, the dark circles underneath the eyes.